They say that one man's trash is another man's treasure, and nowhere is that more true than when you're going green. One of the easiest ways we can green our lifestyle is in the simple act of recycling. And today, we're going to feature some fascinating people who are getting creative with the three R's. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. <laughs> If you came across a junkyard filled with twisted and rusted airplane parts, chances are you'd think it was just useless scraps of metal that have seen better days. But for Donovan Fell and Dave Hall, this is a jackpot. It's not so much the art of recycling, but it's uh, the art of uh, recreation. We make functional art out of vintage aircraft. It's Probably the best That's way to basically what we do. Rocket canisters morph into coffee tables, bombshells turn into aquariums, and airplane wings transform into slick conference tables. These guys are taking recycling to a whole new level. It all began when Donovan found some old World War II propellers. Now, they were old and greasy and beat up, but you know, I saw what they could look like immediately. What Donovan saw and ultimately created was a nine-foot-tall gleaming sculpture of aviation history. And everybody that came in that place, when they saw these sparkling things, they were like fish lures. Everybody just, their eyes lit up. And as soon as he saw that, he was hooked. So MotoArt, the company, was off to a flying start. Now they rescue and recycle an amazing array of aircraft parts. This is one sexy looking table. Well, this is off the C-130. This is what we call our C-130 conference table. Here we have our 727 engine cowling reception desk. Here we have the aqua bomb, which is made out of an a aquarium. Bomb. Yeah, it's an aquarium. It's, it's a lot of fun, uh, just totally changing the purpose of what the piece was designed for. I'd up, you know, to show you uh, what we have uh, back here is our little miniature boneyard. It's a, it's a great way to see the stuff in its raw form, like the bomb, the tail fin assemblies. Uh, a lot of times, just the shape of the piece uh, will immediately jump out at us and go, oh, that made a great table, this will be this, this will be that. Hey, we certainly don't have blueprints on any of this. <laughs> <laughs> we're just the opposite of how the airplanes were made with thousands and thousands of pages of detailed technical drawings. We do this. <laughs> we do this. That's exactly right. Yeah. What in the world is that? So this That's is the front end of a jet engine. And Don't this drop will, it, This will make a beautiful coffee table once we get to it. We'll, we'll take all that tubing you see on there, clean it up, powder coat the piece, put it back together, and we've got a wonderful uh, recycled jet engine table, which and, and like Dave always good. says, the Joneses don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> and here's another future series. Uh, we a just, sink? Uh, that's right. This, this is going to be a good call. Yeah. Now, this is all going to be sanded. You know, Dom and I will you know, debate all the time when we're out you know, yeah, hunting. We, we battle about this a lot. You know, Dom's like, oh, we can do this, we can do that, we can do this. I want to make this into a water feature. I want to keep going and going and going on it and add this and do this. And I'm always pulling yeah, them back, pulling them back. back and going, hey, we've got to sell this at a reasonable price or we're going to have a, a white elephant on our hands. Like the mile high bed. <laughs> <laughs> While the inspiration for a piece may come quickly, the work it takes to make these babies shine is far from easy. Propeller sculpture could take anywhere from 40 to 100 hours, depending on the size. A, a conference table could take three weeks. It just depends on the piece and how much work that we do with it. And, and how beat up it was when we got it. We had a, an interesting client that uh, bought a B25 desk, and he gets it there, and he calls us. He goes, there's a hole going through the frame. And the client sent it back to us. Complained. Saying, there's a big hole right through the wing. And when we pulled out of the crate, it was a bullet hole. It was a bullet hole going right through the frame. No one realized until we got it back here. And at that point, it's like, look, I just want a new new desk. We turned around, we sold it for $2,000 more. Yeah, and then we made the guy a brand new B25 desk. Then, then we sort of toyed with the idea of, should, you know, should we get a gun and just start <laughs> shooting a lot of these and raise our prices? We haven't done that. But what a great combination. Create art, preserve history, and consider it recycling. No, I don't think we set out to start this company being green. That wasn't our primary intent. Our primary intent was to rescue uh, aviation history. 
But recycling is exactly what these two do, and recycling in the best possible way. Reusing industrial parts and repurposing them rather than creating all the parts from scratch. This, this is a, a, a rudder off a DC-6, which yes. actually belonged to the monkeys back in the 70s. <laughs> And, uh, that's the love of this whole thing for us, is uh, finding this stuff that's been derelict for years and bringing it back. I was out in Indiana last week cutting up DC-9s, and we're 40 feet up in the air cutting stabilizers off, and you know, we were about to make the cut, and like, man, can you hear the plane scream? Is, is he screaming? And, and my, my, my uh, coworker out there says, well, he's not. He's actually applauding you for rescuing them because the truth is this week they're in there with a big cruncher and they're crunching them all up. So it's like we gave this DC-9 a second life. In their second life, these pieces will find themselves with top celebrities in corporate offices and with folks like longtime client Marshall Parker. That is the best. It's just outstanding. It's, it's great. It, uh, it's a great way of, uh, of remembering the past. And I think these guys do an incredible job of, of bringing back to life things that we shouldn't forget. And that's what it's all about. I think the only rule we have at Moto Art is it's got to be museum quality, um, and that's what our name stands for. Other than that, I mean, we completely think out of the box here. We all listen to each other and try to come up with what Dave said, the best museum quality product we can. And have fun. And have fun. And it's obvious after spending time with Dave and Donovan that they found a way to balance both. Coming up next on It's Easy Being Green, we find out what it really means to run your car on veggie oil with the help of some friends. Anything to get us off uh, the you know, fossil fuel dependency that we have. It's naturally better for the environment. So. And of course it smells like french fries. It does smell <laughs> like french fries.